And I love golden hour. It's my favorite time of day to shoot, especially when I'm outside. You're gonna get beautiful skin tones. The light is setting through the trees. It diffuses through, and you're not gonna to have to worry about those, the harsh lighting that you get earlier in the day. So joining me is Jacob. We're gonna demonstrate how I take pictures during golden hour. Now I have my 24 to 70 millimeter lens on right now. Um, my ISO, since we're outside and there's still a, quite a bit of light, it's probably, I'm gonna set it to about 200. And then um, my f-stop I have to four because I like to shoot wide open and get the nice blur in the background of the picture. So let's come over this way and take some pictures. I'm trying to keep my back to the available light so that the light is hitting his face in these pictures. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's great too. <laughs> All right, try some with your sticks above and below your chin, like above your head. Yeah, like that. So what's fun about this picture is he's kind of making a frame within the frame of the photograph with the sticks <laughs> like this. It draws your attention to his eyes, to his face. It makes for a fun picture. All right, now let's try some over here. Yeah, just a little bit right there. Awesome. So what I love about golden hour is that you can still get the nice catch lights in their eyes. You don't have to worry about your kids squinting because the sun's right in their face. And you also don't have to worry about the harsh light that you get at high noon with all of the shadows. So some people call it magic hour, some people call it golden hour. One thing we can all agree on is it's a great time of day to shoot. Now one thing to consider when you're shooting in golden hour is the backlit photo. It makes for a beautiful halo effect around your kids. Now I'm kind of going to demonstrate this for you with Jacob. He's my eight-year-old model here. Now one thing when you're shooting in golden hour, if we're facing the sun, it can be really bright on their face. So that's why it's fun to play around with backlit photos too, because then they're not squinting into the sun. So I'm going to set him right into that harsh sunlight. I have my 24 to 70 millimeter lens on. I also have my lens hood on. Um, this is great because it kind of helps your lens focus better. Sometimes when the sun's in the frame, it can make it hard for your uh, lens to focus when you're snapping the picture. So that helps. Another way you can do that, I can position myself so that I'm standing um, a little bit in the shade so the light is filtered through the trees. And then I'm going to position myself and down a little bit, snap the photo and it makes for a beautiful picture around sunset. Um, I see the sun coming through the trees. I'm trying to get the sun a little bit out of the frame, just out of the frame, and I can get a nice burst in that photograph. Now turn your shoulders just a little bit towards me. Perfect, that's great. Beautiful photograph. Awesome, you look great. And then you can take some vertical as well. Yeah, cross your arms, I like that. You're cute. Although golden hour is a great time to take pictures, one of my favorite times to shoot, sometimes you just can't afford the midday harsh sun that's coming in your face. So some ways you can combat that is to try to find some shade. So right now we have Jamari out in the sun. It's bright over his face. It can cause your kids to kind of squint. If I were to take a picture now, you're gonna get some shadows in the way, some harsh shadows. It's not as beautiful as the light that you get during the golden hour. So some ways to combat this is to find your own shade. Like if Jamari were to go over in the trees, we're gonna take some pictures of you in the trees. So find some shade, there you go, nice. So once he stands in the shade, just back up just a little bit more, perfect. And then if I were to take pictures of him right here, the sun is diffused through the trees. You're not getting as much of that harsh light on his face and it makes for a much prettier photograph. Now, if there are no trees around where you're taking your pictures, you can also make your own shade with something like a hat or an umbrella and you can make some, take some cute pictures that way as well. So taking pictures, if you're out in the sun, the hat in the way would make it so that his eyes are shaded. You don't have to worry about squinting and the shadows that you would get in the face otherwise would be taken care of. So there are some different things to consider. Another thing you can do is just wait for clouds. If it's a partly cloudy day and it's really sunny at the moment, just wait for a cloud to come by and to create some nice diffused light that way. Now that we've talked about how to handle natural lighting situations outside, let's head indoors and talk about how to deal with it there. Using natural sunlight indoors is much less about the time of day and more about the position and way that you position yourself and your subject and the light when you're taking the pictures. So you can really get a variety of looks in your photographs depending on how you play with the light in your house. So joining me is eight-year-old Jacob and we're going to demonstrate this for you. So first, let's have, a, let's get a front light photo. So we're going to have you stand right here in front of the door. So this is all the light is coming towards his face. I can focus on his face. 
I'm putting my back to the light and the picture I'm getting is nice, a bright lit photo. You can see the beautiful catch lights in his eyes. If you needed more light in the house, you could do this you know, by a window, but if, the, um, if you're by a door uh, and it doesn't have this beautiful glass, you can simply open the door. That's another great way to get full light um, on the front of the face, Some, a nice beautiful front lit photo. Another way uh, that you can get a creative, beautiful lit photo is by playing with side light. I like to do this sometimes. So Jacob, I'm gonna have you face this way, yep. So now instead of the light coming directly on his face, it's hitting side of his face. So um, using, I like to use uh, spot metering and then I set my exposure meter and I look at the number and try to set my exposure just right to the side of his face that is lit. So you get a nice beautiful shadow on um, one side of his face and then the other side is lit. It's fun to play with sometimes. And then finally, um, another thing that I like to do is play with beautiful silhouette photos. So Jacob, if I could have you open this door. Great, yeah, just look at the door. So here, instead of focusing uh, the spot metering on his face, I'm gonna spot meter to outside. And then I'm going to look at the exposure meter that's inside of the camera and then take the picture of him. So that creates a nice fun silhouette look, which is another fun way to play with photos. Thank you, Jacob. So depending on how you're standing, whether your subject is standing with the light to their front, their side, or if it's a nice silhouette, it's a fun way to just play around with the light in different photos. So far in this lesson, we've talked a lot about natural lighting situations and how to handle the light when you're outdoors and indoors using window light and things like that. But sometimes, you know, it's dark and you've lost all available light from the sun. And sometimes you're just stuck with the tungsten light that you have all around of your house. And that's okay. So sometimes maybe you're taking pictures like I like to do some in the bathroom with my kids splashing in the tubs and things like that. So I'm gonna show you how to handle that so you don't get that yellowy tinge in your photos. So I'm gonna give you an example shooting in live mode so you can see the difference in changing this. Hey Sadie, Sadie's gonna help me model this. Thank you. Give me some Play-Doh. So while she's playing with this Play-Doh, I'm gonna demonstrate in live mode how you can see the difference so if I was shooting outdoors and had my white balance sent to daylight, you can tell when you come inside that your picture is really yellow. That's not how I'm seeing it with my naked eye. So if you wanna change that, you can switch your white balance over to tungsten light and you can see how it changes the image that you're seeing through your camera. It looks a lot more like how I'm seeing here right now. Do you wanna squish this one? Look at that, poke it, poke it. And another thing that I like to do just to make it easy is just set to auto white balance. Then you don't have to worry about it. Usually your camera's a pretty good judge of how it's gonna look. 